Hello friends, welcome to a Faith Chat Friday. I was going to say another Faith Chat Friday, but it's been so long since I've done one of these that I kind of felt uncomfortable saying that. Um, for those that haven't been around a long time, um, the reason I, I did the first of these, and I've done two or three, not, not many, was that I feel it's important to take an opportunity to to, to share our faith and I want to make sure that that everyone watching this understands I'm not talking about trying to change other people I'm not talking about trying to convert I think there's value in all faith and I don't care if you are a Catholic which I'm a Roman Catholic a Christian uh, Lutheran Baptist Muslim Jew, it doesn't matter. The point is we all love a creator and we hope for something beyond this world. And I think that if we talk about the things that kind of bind us together, we get to a much better place than if we focus on the things that separate us. So I wanted to talk today about something that I was thinking about you know, over a year ago when I, when I did, uh, actually it's probably more than two years now, when I did the first of these videos, I really wanted to get into this because it is something that I think is often misunderstood about uh, Catholicism, and it's an important part of my faith. By the way, I'm enjoying some Haunted Bookshop in uh, 7 le 622. So you hear and, and most know that you know Catholics quote pray to saints or Catholics pray to the Blessed Mother, to, to the Mother of Christ. Um, and that leads people to think that we elevate the saints and the Blessed Mother to the same level as Jesus. That's not at all what we do. Um, you know, I've been a Catholic my whole life. I've never thought, never once thought that a saint had anything close, or was anywhere close to the same level as Jesus. The only difference between myself and a saint is that a saint has died, and we strongly believe that the saint is in heaven with God. So, what does that then mean? Well, in the Catholic mindset, and, and this is, you know, maybe different from your tradition, and, and that's okay. I mean, it's, it's it, well, first off, you can be Catholic your whole life and never, never uh, even acknowledge a saint. It's no, no need for it. You don't need to ever say a prayer to the Blessed Mother. It's, it's completely unnecessary. You can just focus on the Trinity, you know, Jesus, Holy Spirit, God, and Creator, God the Father. That that's fine. There's nothing required here. There's no there's no need for this. But the way it was explained to me was if you have a family member that you love dearly, let's say your mother or your grandmother, and they live a you know good life, they're they, they love the Lord and they pass away, you will believe strongly that that person is in heaven with God. It's also reasonable to assume that since they are with God, they have, they share in his understanding, his knowledge. Um, they don't have his understanding. They, they don't have the capacity for it, but they can share in it. They, they can have a little bit of it. And therefore, they, it's reasonable to think that they might be aware of you because they love you and they, they, they want to continue to follow you as in, in, in your life in the expectation of someday being together with you in the presence of God. So if that's true, then it's reasonable to think that if you were to say, Mom, I know you're up there. Could you please ask God to help me? Help me overcome this challenge. Help me, give me the grace to overcome this temptation. You know, something like that. 
you wouldn't be asking your mother to give you grace. You would be asking your mother to intercede for you and, and ask the Lord for that grace. Why is that any different than you asking the Lord for that grace? Well, it's probably not, you know, because God is obviously paying attention to you. But now it's no different than me asking you to pray for me, right? If I ask you to pray for that grace, then two people are asking. Well, if I ask my mom, who I believe is in heaven, to pray for that grace, then two people are asking. Well, in that case, it would be three, because I've asked you. And that's the whole point of saints. So saints are, so I believe my mom's in heaven, but the church has not said, yes, Mike's mom is in heaven. But the church has said, uh, Francis of Assisi is very, very likely in heaven. And that's all a saint is in, in the Catholic tradition. We don't pray to them and ask them to do things for us. We pray to them and ask them to pray for us. And that's always true. And that's true with the Blessed Mother as well. You know, if you, if you go through the Hail Mary, which is the most you know, famous prayer of, uh, of Catholics related to the Blessed Mother, it is a prayer that is very scriptural. Just about everything in that prayer is taken directly out of scripture. And it's simply praising her for her willingness to be the uh, site of the incarnation, if you will. Her care of the child Jesus, our Lord. And in the end, the, the only thing thing is we ask for intercession. We say, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. We're not saying do this for it. We're saying pray for us. That's all. So that's what a saint is, okay? Believe it or not, I needed to talk about that in order to talk about some something completely different, which is my new Halloween Zippo. <laughs> the reason is that the imagery on the Zippo, while very much modern and spooky and Halloween-y, and hopefully you can see that well, it's got a skull emerging from a clock, you know, it's sort of a steampunk design, the clock has gears in it and all that. Uh, I really like this, I, I think this is really cool looking, and it certainly is spooky enough to be a Halloween light. On the back of it, I had this Latin phrase inscribed. And if you can't read that, what it says is, Tempus Fugit Memento Mori. That is a Latin phra um, phrase that I've, I was taught at a young age, but later was reintroduced to when I joined the Knights of Columbus. It's part of their sort of first level introduction. That, that's sort of a key theme. And what it means, that, and just to, to translate it directly, uh, Tempus Fugit means time flies. Okay? Memento Mori means remember death or remember that you must die. So time flies, remember death. Why in the world would I want to, to have that on my lighter? And why in the world would I want to be talking about it in a faith chat? Well, it's a central part of my life, the understanding that I'm going to die. You have to be comfortable with that. You have to accept it. And you have to realize that today might well be your last day. And therefore, you want to live today as if it's your last day. Uh, St. Francis was famous for this, and this is why I had to bring in saints early on, because I want to talk a bit about saints and, and some of the iconography around them. Uh, Francis was um, a, a really interesting person. So he was a wealth, from a wealthy family. He basically gave everything up and became this poor begging monk who would travel around and who challenged the church, you know, challenged 
bishops that he saw as being corrupt. He, there's a very famous story about St. Francis that uh, I, I love. It's, it, to me, it's very important. So he found this old, decrepit, abandoned church in uh, San Damiano. And he went into it to pray, and there was this beautiful crucifix there, and he, he's kneeling down and he's praying, and he's just, you know, Lord, what should I do? And he hears a voice, he hears the voice of God, and God simply says to him, Francis, rebuild my church. And he says, okay, and, and so he starts rebuilding this, this broken down church, and he gets people to help, and you know, donations from the, from the local community, and all. And he ultimately rebuilds this church, and, and, and it's, it's you know, beautifully done and all that. And he's finished, and he's kneeling, praying before the same crucifix, and he again hears the voice of God, and he says, Francis, rebuild my church. And he says, I don't understand. You know, I, I rebuilt it. It's done. And he says, no, rebuild my church. What God meant, what God was asking him to do was to reform the church, to get rid of these... Or, or to point out these corrupt bishops, to, to be a gadfly for, for corruption within the church. And it was there and it always has been. You know, it's, it's any organization, unfortunately, uh, organization leads to politics, politics lead to corruption. There's no way around that. So uh, he did do that and he was a great reformer. He was... He, he neglected himself. You know, he didn't eat properly. He didn't eat much. He didn't take good care of himself. He uh, worked with the sick and in particular was known for working with lepers without any, um, well, there was no protection at the time. So he just worked with lepers. And of course, there was always the risk of, of contracting leprosy from lepers. And, and he had failing health uh, for the last, I'm going to guess it was about 10 years of his life. Uh, he often was, you know, very close to death, and he was famous for telling people to remember death, to remember that today is the, the could be the last day of your life, and that was probably because he was in such failing health. But it focused him. It focused him very uh, significantly upon this idea of. I need to live my life today as if it's the last day, and I need to be ready. And I need to be ready. I need to make sure that I am in a state of grace, that I have confessed my sins, that I'm doing good for other people, that I'm living the life that I think is most corresponding to what the Lord wants, that I am living like Jesus. And because of this... Uh, you know, today we see St. Francis, and you've all seen St. Francis statues. They're very popular lawn ornaments. And, you know, he's. I, I read an article sort of leading up to this, uh, preparing for this, and, and someone said that if you go by the modern depiction of St. Francis, you would assume that he was the patron saint of zookeepers. He always has a bird in his hand, and there's animals at his feet. And, you know, Francis loved animals. He loved all of God's creation. He wrote something called the Canticle of Brother, Son, and Sister Moon, which is sort of a poem. Well, it's, it's sort of a prayer, really. It's not really a poem. It doesn't rhyme much, but he just thanks God for things and then praises God. So he you know, prays God for us, Brother, Son, because it warms us and brings us life. Praise God for Sister Moon, who lights the... And everything was a brother or sister to him. And in this canticle, he actually says, praise God for sister death. You know, it, it, was, it was important to him. He knew that he had to be prepared. So, in early paintings of Francis, you will always see, and I'll, I'll put, put one in here. I think I have one at the front of the video. You'll always see him with a skull. The skull was very prominent in... in uh, art related to St. Francis of Assisi, and then in other art forms, in, in other religious art. It was actually very common in religious art to have a skull. Not necessarily as the centerpiece, but somewhere in the, in the image you will find a skull. And if you look at paintings, um, 
in particular uh, Catholic art, and I'm going to say Renaissance period and, and later, you'll often see this skull. That is a reminder of, it's a memento mori, remember you will die. I actually have one on my desk at work, and I took a picture of it here. It's just a small model. It's not a, not a real skull. But when I go into work in the morning, I sit down at my desk, and the first thing I see is that skull looking back at me. And it just centers me. I also have up above uh, on the monitor a small... Uh, St. Benedict medal, because I have a devotion to, to St. Benedict, uh, it, it's a cross. And again, the focus is on Christ, it's not on the person of Benedict. But he led a life that is, in my opinion, exemplary, and I try to emulate that, and I try to approach God in, in a way similar to what Benedict did. So it's not that I'm worshipping him, I'm merely using him as an example. I also have on the wall above my uh, whiteboard a small cross, and I'll put a picture in here. Uh, that's a no-no, <laughs> but I have it there anyway, and nobody's noticed. We, uh, you know, we have we have rules about such things at work, and I also can't hang up political s signs. And it's not just anti-religion; it's just let's make everybody feel comfortable. I don't know why a cross would make anybody feel uncomfortable, but such is life. So this skull is, is important to me uh, because it, it brings up this concept of memento mori. It's something that I, I think is very important in my own faith. It helps me better prepare for the end. But also focus today on what's really important. So that's the story behind this, um, and certainly the story behind the inscription. Beyond that, I think it is a really cool lighter. <laughs> it does work. <laughs> and I will be using it certainly in October as we approach Halloween. Uh, love Halloween, as you guys well know. Uh, also, it'll help me think about the Catholic uh, holidays of uh, All Saints Day and All Souls Day, which are, in a sense, related to Halloween. And maybe that's something that we'll talk about as we get closer to um, the end of the month. So I hope you found that interesting. I again the the. the point here is not to convert, not to preach, but to share. And I, I wanted people to understand this part of my faith, uh, which is different from many of you, I know. But you don't need to be afraid of that, because we, we all love God. Uh, and you don't need to be afraid of people that maybe don't see God the same way you do. Um, you know, there's a value in understanding. I'm just going to pick the most wildest example that I can. I'm not picking on these people, but there's value in understanding the Hindus. They're so different from, from our, our belief. Very, very different. Polytheistic. All sorts of stuff going on in Hinduism. <laughs> But if you sit down and talk to them, and I have done this, I've had the opportunity to actually sit down with a family of Hindus and, and talk about faith. It was a wonderful experience. There's so much in common. You know, there's so much that we believe. We have different names for things. We have different uh, beliefs about who is actually there. But we really believe that there was a loving, caring creator that we need to know and live in a way that allows us to one day be reunited with that creator. And that, that's beautiful. The fact that all 
faith share that I think is really beautiful. And that's what this is about, sharing. So I hope you enjoyed it. I will not take up any more of your time. Uh, I enjoyed it, and I look forward to talking to you about this and many other things in the near future. But take care, my friends, and we will talk again soon.